Hey there athletes, Coach John Ferry here from Team Wilpers. Very excited to welcome you to the Week 8 Athlete Briefing for our Winter Run Challenge 2023. So per usual, before we get into Week 8, let's do a quick review of Week 7. So week 7 started off with our 45-minute interval run. That was that 5 by 2 minutes anaerobic capacity, 2 minutes easy. Seemed pretty easy, right? Not so much. I think I prefaced last week in the briefing that I thought that this was going to be the pinnacle of intensity of this training challenge. And now I bet uh, you, most of you have completed it, I have to imagine. I'm sure agree with me at this point. So tough workout. Congratulations for everybody who's put that behind them and checked that one off their box. As I mentioned, we we're working anaerobic capacity in that workout and over the scope of the entire workout, we got 10 minutes of time in zones, 10 minutes in zone six. That's an excellent, very challenging, but very doable workout. So it's gonna hopefully set the stage for a great test here next week. Speaking of tests, our key run number two of week seven here, 45 minute test pace run. So a little bit of math was required for some of you out there. What we're doing here is going to that test pace from week one, our first 20 minute distance test, that set the, the pacing zones for the rest of the challenge. And we're just reacclimating ourselves a little bit with what that felt like. And then taking just a little bit faster to what we are hoping to achieve here in the week to come with that second 20 minute distance test. So it's a nice time to just re-familiarize yourself with what that pace is what that felt like to set a goal for the upcoming 20 minute distance test, of maybe where you start, maybe where you are hoping to spend the bulk of that time. But this, the main point of this workout, other than getting a great VO2 max uh, session in, is to get really race ready or test ready for that second 20 minute distance test in week eight. Final key run, 60 minute endurance run, easy peasy, start to finish, best run of the week, always. Most fun. So reminder, website, go in, check the boxes that you have done the workout. We're still seeking that 100% completion percentage. So get in there, go ahead, get credit for doing the workout. Want to make sure you're getting as close to 100%. If you're not all the way to 100% as possible, it's still important to track. You want to be able to compare back in future challenges to how things went th with this challenge, how things are going in the future, but you got to measure it on a challenge by challenge and week by week basis. Let's go in, check that box. Week eight workouts. Run number one, our 30 minute interval run. We're going back to the week one uh, workout, our first introduction to anaerobic capacity intervals. That's what we're gonna do here, just to kind of touch on that pace one more time. You might ask why we're, we're not kind of pulling fully off the gas going into the distance test. And in essence, what we don't wanna have happen is you know, the 10, 11 days that potentially has passed between key run number two of this week all the way to the weekend of that 20 minute distance test, just be nothing but easy mileage. So we wanna drop the volume of this workout here as the top workout of, uh, of next week, but we wanna keep a little bit of that intensity in there. So we're moving all, we're going all the way back down to those little 30 second intervals. So 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, relatively short workout top to bottom in comparison to the hard work you've been doing now. So this is our 30 minute interval run, just one opportunity to, you know, kind of spin our wheels, get that fat touch on that fast pace before the weekend when we want to do that 20 minute test. Key run number two, 30 minute easy run. So at this point we are fully pulling off the, the gas. We're really trying to start resting up a little bit, take it nice and easy and get ready for the weekend. So no, no extra points for running this faster. You just want to dial it back down, take it nice and easy. Because our final key workout, the penultimate workout of this challenge, our second 20 minute distance test, it's the reason everybody came here was to get a little bit better from week one to week eight. We have to measure, we have to see how we're doing. That's how we know if we have any progress. It's a 20 minute distance test. You will notice we have done so much work on warm ups in this challenge, and I went into our probably our, one of our most important workouts and I didn't mention it one bit. And it wasn't by accident, I, I you know, was very conscious of doing so. The reason I did it is I now, we were, we're turning it over to you. We're giving you license to, to start creating your own race day warm up. We put all these kind of tools in your runner's tool bag at this point. You know, we've done 
lunge matrices, the 3D calf stretch, the resistance band work, we've done striders in the warm-ups. So it's now your turn to take all of those kind of tools that you've grown and worked on and try to figure out the things that were most applicable to you. Was there something that really worked for you? Great, make sure that's in. Was there something that did nothing at all for you? Also great, that one's out. We wanna make sure we're doing the things that are gonna prepare you as best as possible to go ahead and have a nice, really hard run. And so you can take that as you go into your future tests and races and you can modify it, you can tweak it, you can make it your routine for the rest of time. But these are things that you want to be able to adjust based on your individual needs to get race ready. Um, over. So that make sure you are doing a warm up, make sure you are getting your body ready to go. But it's now on you to plan your own perfect race day warm up. So we're gonna talk about a couple pacing strategies, uh, I guess a few pacing strategies, which are really the only three there are. So we have even splits, we have negative splits, and we have positive splits. So even splits, as you probably imagine, is evenly paced splits across the scope of your 20 minutes. Negative splits will be running slower at the beginning, faster at the finish. So you're getting faster over the course of that 20 minute test. Positive splits, the exact opposite starting a little bit faster and almost have like a planned fall off at the end of the race or end of the test. All, all of these strategies can be used very effectively. I'll start with probably even and negative splits. Negative splits in particular is something talked about, probably the gold standard of pacing, which is to get a little bit faster over the course of the race. I think this is an excellent idea for especially people who are newer to test taking, maybe newer to racing in general, it's gonna set you up for a, a, probably a higher likelihood of success and definitely an overall kind of better experience. So let's talk about some of the upsides of, I'm just gonna kind of group together a both a, an even and a negative split, because I think they're about the same. And the upsides are, it can set you up for a really strong second half. As I mentioned, it's a better probably overall testing experience for most people. And it really kind of hedges your bets of the negative outcome of that starting out too fast and not being able to sustain. The main downside, so there is, there is a, you know, a reason that some people don't always do it every single time, is that potentially you leave a little bit on the, the table. You know, if you get to the final minutes of the race and realize that you had more to give, the, the opportunity to do so is a little bit limited at that point. So. That kind of takes me to the, the positive split. And the positive split, some, very, very rarely is it really a planned fall off. What I will, will kind of retitle it a little bit here is just a, a fast start approach. And so the fast start approach starts to become, you know, especially useful for people with really specific goals. So if you are a racing a race and have a, a very specific time goal and you know that it's gonna take a fast start and a, very, and, a, and a really strong effort to achieve it, you might go into it sort of taking the calculated risk that things potentially could fall off a little bit in the second half. And then what you're hoping to do is just stay very, very close. So it's just a very minute positive split which you laid down that first half so heavy. So as I mentioned, I see it a, a lot when people are experienced test takers, they're experienced racers, they have very specific goals and they're going after it to achieve it. And as I mentioned, it's a calculated risk because certainly the downside is that it doesn't go the way you want it, is that you end up not being able to sustain. And so you have to know that going in when you kind of go in with that even to positive uh, approach, that kind of fast start approach, which I think, once again, I think is probably a more apt name, that there is that downside risk. And it's uh, from time to time, it's okay. And the more you test, the more you're kind of able to go out and, and go for it and be okay with a situation where it doesn't always go well. So once again, the upside is that you're starting potentially at a PR pace. You're starting at an aggressive pace, so you're setting the stage for yourself early. It could go better than expected. I, don't, I sure hope everyone has run one of these races in their life where you start too fast, you realize you're, you're all worried about it, and then you just never slow down. It's the best race day there is. Happened to me, I think, two times I can think of. Uh, out of a lot, so. Yeah. Uh, downside is you could absolutely fall off the pace. It could go up. You know, you could go too hard, make the second half very, very challenging. When that second half gets very, very challenging, 
it certainly can turn into a negative experience. So all of these are great, are, all of these are strategies. All of them can be very successful strategies. You have to kind of know what kind of racer and runner you are. You have to use your training experience and your other racing experience to pick things that are appropriate for you. So as I mentioned, if you're newer to testing and you're newer to racing, I would absolutely go in favor of the, the kind of um, even to negative split. If you are incredibly experienced at running and racing and are going for uh, very specific time goals, it's okay to do that kind of fast start and even uh, approach. You just have to know going into it that there are those downside risks. So the best strategy, once again, based absolutely off of your training experience and your racing experience. The more often you do these tests, the more often you put yourself in these situations to be uncomfortable, you're going to get better at actually executing the test. You're gonna know when to push, how hard you can push, what that push feels like, and when you need to pull back. So that's why we do them twice in the scope of the eight week challenge, and then repeat that process over and over again for people who've done many challenges. And as I hope that you see that you get better and better and better, just not only faster, but you get better and more confident executing the test each time you kind of toe the line and give it a go. So keep getting out there. I was gonna say the best approach kind of for the group uh, and is we will kind of look at that negative split approach. So if we're gonna recommend for the most amount of people, we're gonna almost always go for that e even to negative split. So what I would do personally, if I were trying to plan this out for myself, and it was one of the main reasons, you know, we put that race pace workout in this week, is I would start that my next 20 minute distance test, the 20 minute distance test coming up at the the pace of my previous 20 minute distance test. You've, you know you can achieve that because you already have achieved that. So it's, it's simple at this point. So I would set that as my baseline and then I would make a slight progression over the scope of each five minutes to just move a little bit faster. I know someone was asking about, is it point one? Is it, you know, whatever? It's entirely dependent upon your paces. So point one is gonna be a totally different percentile increase for one pace than another. So what is important is not increasing 0.1 or 2% or whatever it is, the thing that is important and what we wanna do is just increase a little bit. And that is gonna be a different, once again, for every person. And depending upon, if you're a, we've talked about it at some point, if you're a newer athlete, you, the, the gains you can make are exponentially bigger than a more experienced athlete. It's gonna be harder to eke out little bits of difference. So what, once again, we're gonna start at that previous test pace and at five minute mark we want to get a little bit faster and at the 10 minute mark we want to get just a little bit faster and it's okay i think at that 10 minute mark in particular if you don't feel like you can push or you have question marks you want to sustain because so what you want to do the most important thing is just to be a little bit faster than that previous test baseline so if you are starting at that previous test baseline You've already made one little push to go a little bit faster. You're already there. You can absolutely sustain for the final 10 minutes and be faster and kind of achieve that goal of getting a little bit better. So use that 10 minute mark really to decide what you wanna do over the second half. And then finally, that final five minutes becomes your next opportunity to push, really to go after it with all you have for five more minutes. You can do anything for five minutes. So um, hopefully in this scenario, you can do every, anything for 20 minutes. So that's what we're going to do is push nice and hard for 20 minutes. But that's all I would do. Once again, start at your previous test result. Move a little bit faster at the five minute mark. See how you're feeling at 10 minutes. See if you can move faster. And then finally, for the final couple minutes, you want to give it your all, kind of go all out. Hopefully you have a sense at that point of just how hard you can push uh, for a final, final few more minutes. Week eight challenge, test time. Super creative on that one. Share a photo or story about how you ran your second 20 minute distance test. We'll pick our favorite and send a little TW swag your way. Make sure to tag at Team Wilpers, at Team Wilpers Run Challenge, and hashtag Team Wilpers Run to participate. So we're gonna do a few questions that came up amongst the group here. So someone asked, can I discuss thoughts on cadence? So absolutely. So there is a gold standard of cadence around 180 steps per minute. So not everybody has that cadence and that is okay. 
So the first thing, and probably the most important thing I, I feel about cadence is, is it an issue worth addressing? So if I have a healthy runner that's running a very low cadence, the last thing I'm gonna do is go and start to work on their mechanics and work on their stride because I had a healthy runner that was running just fine. And if that low cadence is working for them, then, then great. When I would start to go in and work on cadence is if I had someone who was experiencing lower leg related issues, stress related issues, and I noticed that that cadence was a little bit low. Uh, probably, we'll kind of say low cadence is probably somewhere in the, the low 160s, maybe even high 160s, where you have the opportunity to get it up a little bit. So when you're thinking about working on cadence, there are a couple pros for that type of runner that's experiencing health issues of moving them to a little bit higher cadence. It's so one the more amount of footfalls, the less impact for footfall. So you're spreading it out over a few more footfalls per minute. Two, it could potentially move them a little bit more forward on the foot, which is not necessarily a guarantee to make them any healthier, but that tends to happen when you have a little bit higher turnover. You go from more of a heel strike to a little bit more of a midfoot strike with those extra turnovers. So that's what you're kind of doing there. There are quite a few ways to go about working on cadence. I won't go into all those right now because I think the, the thing I wanted to really touch on on this one is that it's most important. It is a buzzword and it's out there, but if you're a healthy, happy runner with the low cadence, that's okay. Don't go out and try to adjust your mechanics just because you're trying to get to an industry standard. On the flip side, if you're someone who consistently has uh, these repetitive stress issues, and you notice that your cadence is in that kind of 160 to 170 range, it's absolutely worth probably starting to incorporate some drills, some focus on that, and hopefully make you a little bit healthier runner. The next question here was, most of my runs have been indoors. So it's gonna hit plenty of people here in our winter weather months. But now that the weather is getting better, I would like to take more runs outside. I seem to run slower on a treadmill. My first 20 minute test was on a treadmill. Should I do the next test on a tread to be consistent with the first, or should I run it outside for, uh, since more future runs will be outside and I will have more accurate paces for future runs? So this is a great question and a, a, little, bit of, a little bit of a dilemma here. So in terms of getting the most accurate results from start to finish of this challenge, you probably want to do it on the treadmill so that you can have the most consistent uh, Kind of variables from start to finish so you can really gauge your progress. That being said, getting the most accurate zones for going to run outside is absolutely going to mean running the test outside. So what I would, would encourage you to do is actually run this test this upcoming week on the treadmill to get your comparison between now and week one. What I would then also encourage you to do is two weeks from now when we start the next challenge is to test again and to do a test outside. So it is a couple tests in a couple weeks. That's okay. You can run a few 5Ks in a couple weeks. It's, it's uh, no big deal. However, if you absolutely do not uh, or are not going to test two times or for people who are experiencing this issue and trying to get to outdoor training immediately, I always wanna encourage people to use these tests to kind of set the stage for what's to come. So if you plan to do all of your workouts outside, a test outside is much more useful than a test inside. If you are going to do all of your workouts inside, then coming outside just for the test is not gonna quite give you the same zones. You should probably do the test inside as well. But I'm gonna stick with it. I recommend doing the inside test this week and the outside test in two weeks. And I'm, uh, I'm hold, holding true to that one. Well, ladies and gents, that is all for week eight. So have an amazing final week of the challenge. Thanks as always for being here. I can't wait to see how you do. We'll see you back here in a couple weeks.